Hi, I'm Dorothy Neufeld with the Investing News Network, and here with me today at the Extraordinary Futures Conference is Thomas Beattie, CEO of Volia. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Dorothy. So I wanted to first talk about your investment club trading app and the, the user-based growth that you've experienced over the past few months. Well, since we listed and became a public company on the TSX Venture Exchange uh, at the end of May, uh, we've had the ability to start spending on advertising for the first time in Bolio's existence. So we've actually doubled our user base over the past three months on the back of the Google Partnership Program. They've been running universal app campaigns for us, uh, trying to help us reach a broader cross-section of the market than those that had found Bolio uh, through organic search over the past 18 months. So can you tell me more about your audience? We really targeted the average ordinary American, and by that I'm talking about people that have thousands of dollars, but not tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest. Those people that might be struggling with the barriers to entry and who wouldn't know what to buy if they started on their own. So what we've done is we've made it possible for them to combine their assets and knowledge with the people that they do trust and validate their decisions with that team. Um, so what we've attracted to date has been a, a really broad geographic dispersion of users and I'd say one of the more interesting findings is that 46% of Volio's users are female. That's fascinating. Yes. And that is <laughs> such great news. It is. Uh, they're half the population. It would be nice if they were half of the investor base. Um, on our platform that's almost true. Um, I think it's the collaboration that is really making the difference for women that might be starting uh, on their investment journey and it's the ability to to learn and, and break down all of those barriers. I mentioned them earlier, but they're money, knowledge, time, and fear. All of the different constraints and things that might keep someone from starting to invest. And when you can take the uh, uncertainty out of investing and know that everyone that you're investing with is in the same spot as you and will have a vested interest in your success, it's a lot easier to take those first steps. Interesting, so can you tell me more about the accelerator program that you were part of this past summer. Yeah, FIS put on a great B2B accelerator program through the Venture Center in the States. We spent 12 weeks um, with them and 40 of their partner banks uh, understanding what their needs are and speaking about our technology solutions. So there were 10 different fintech startups, uh, all from the US with the exception of Olio from Vancouver. Uh, from over 200 that had initially applied and they all got access to these institutions to learn more about their pain points and to progress partnership dialogues. Interesting. So over the past few weeks you've broadened your tradable securities to penny stocks. Yes. We started with, uh, with shares over five dollars in the United States and that was uh, loosely suggested by the examiners of Finner when Bolio applied and that was because we knew we were targeting an unsophisticated investor base. So we kept the, the offering to listed equities and ETFs that were not penny stocks, uh, but having had a couple of years of uh, soft launch data under our belts and having seen that they're re uh, investing responsibly, we wanted to open it up to some of the other securities that they may be looking for uh, that are priced under $5 per share. So uh, the expansion does definitely an open up a new and exciting piece of the market, and I'm comfortable with doing it because they've made such great investment decisions. Oh, wow, fantastic. And since January, you've added some new features to your app. What has stood out to you? Constant evolution whenever you have a financial technology product. So we started with true investment clubs, pooled resources, um, teams working together. Then we had members of those clubs asking if they could put on their own personal accounts. So we obviously have facilitated that. Um, now we're working on a bunch of new features, including the launch of Teams this fall, which will enable individual account holders uh, of all types to share their trading ideas with their networks uh, without having to be uh, part of the same uh, account, which will, uh, for some people, give them greater control, uh, even though to date we have seen that the wisdom of crowds has benefited our clubs to the tune of about 2%. Interesting. Yes. So, what are some of the challenges that you're finding in this space right now? Um, there's a lot of competition within discount brokerage. It's a competitive space. There are independent players, there are major financial institutions, um, and there are the startup fintech unicorns that have raised a lot of capital to target investors in this space. I think we've carved ourselves a quite a unique niche by focusing on collaboration and by targeting the credit unions and community banks that uh, would benefit from filling uh, a gap in their current offering. Uh, I think that we're in quite a, a unique spot within the market. 
Um, so most of the financial institutions that are smaller in the U.S., and there are thousands of them, uh, don't have a product that suits the needs of those that might have thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. They've got savings accounts, certificates of deposit, uh, and then they've got a wealth uh, criteria, but they, they don't really have anything in between. And if those customers and members are not um, able to use that financial institution services, they'll go to something else, whether it be a, an Acorns or a Robinhood or a Wealthfront. And all of these solutions are starting to encroach further into the financial lives of their clients, offering either debit cards or high interest savings accounts. And ultimately, there's a real and legitimate risk of those customers leaving these small financial institutions. So we're going to give them the opportunity to add this uh, to their product offering. We'll white label the platform for them and serve their customers giving them access not only to those customers and their networks, but also providing them with uh, an incremental revenue stream and a means to access the networks of their existing customers. And that's their most valuable asset, your, your current customers. So interesting. Yeah. Well, um, that's all the questions that I have for now. Um, we can leave it here. Yeah, we're pretty excited about the quarter ahead. I am expecting that we'll announce our first B2B partnerships later this year. Uh, that would be a huge step forward for us because it will validate the model that we are, are, are expecting to, to use as the anchor of Volio's future growth. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Dorothy. Once again, I'm Dorothy Newfeld with Investing News Network.